Good morning. I'm Samuel Moore, one of the pastors here at Christ United Methodist Church, and we're so thankful that you all decided to worship with us on this Memorial Day weekend, which is also Pentecost Sunday. And as Pastor Morris alluded to, to all those that serve and still serve, we are grateful for your service. Before I share today's message, will you all join me for a word of prayer? God, we thank you that you are the giver of every good and perfect gift. We thank you for the gift of life, the gift of grace, the gift of mercy, the gift of your son Jesus and your precious Holy Spirit. God, we thank you for those that served and those that are serving that risked our lives to keep us safe. God, I ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here. Hide me behind the cross so that way all of your people will always see all of you and none of me. So that way all of your people will always hear all of you and none of me. Thank you, God, for allowing the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts to be found acceptable in your sight. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. If you have been worshiping with us for the past several weeks, then you know we have a new worship series titled Ancient Wisdom for Modern Families. Today I will discuss some benefits of being a part of a church family. I'm sure you all are familiar with the saying that you cannot choose your family, but you can choose who you are friends with. Well, I would take that statement further and add that you can choose your church family. Today is not as it was when there was only one church in the community. No, now there are four or five or more churches within a one mile radius. I must add that if you are looking for a perfect church, you will not find it because of the broken humans in the church. Laity and clergy are broken. Sadly, there is no perfect church, but the good news is that we have a perfect God that loves us all, even though we all fall short of the glory of God. There are some benefits of being a part of a church family. There are some that I may not name. One benefit of being a part of the church family is that you are not alone. That's right. You are not alone. If you heard my message when I shared that it was an unsolicited prayer answered for me when we were on lockdown, then you know I do not mind being alone. My wife says I like to be on my own private island. But the writer of Ecclesiastes highlights that two is better than one, and three is better than two. The writer adds that if one is alone and they fall, there is no one there to pick them up. If one is alone and cold, there is no one there to warn them. When you are connected to a church that is attempting to be the church that God wants it to be, you will not be alone. Being alone has this time and place. Jesus would spend time alone, but he would also spend time with people. Even though I prefer being alone, I am grateful that I have a church family that will be there for me when I want someone to fellowship with or converse with. You are not alone. A second benefit of being a part of a church family is that when you are down, there is someone that will encourage you. When you are down, there is someone that will encourage you. One of the many fruitful, relevant ministries that Christ Church offers is train Stephen ministers. You know, unfortunately, we live in a broken world. Because it is broken, people have experienced grief, abuse, loss, and trauma. So please do not miss this. Some people may have died by suicide because they felt as if they had no one to talk to. Some people struggle to get out of the bed because of something they have experienced. But I want you to know that if you are a person that is dealing with grief, loss, or trauma, or you have been molested or raped, you are not alone. 
There is help. All you must do is reach out. These trained Stephen ministers, they will not P-R-E-Y pray on you. They will P-R-A-Y pray for and with you. They will not share this personal information with anyone so anyone or everyone knows your business. They will encourage you that it is not your fault. They will encourage you not to lose hope. They will encourage you that there is light at the end of the tunnel. They will encourage you not to throw in a towel. Sometimes I have been like King David and had to encourage myself, but it is a blessing when I'm feeling low and someone encourages me to go on to see how the end will be. Sometimes people have encouraged me and they did not even know it. There was a time when I was going to quit trying to be an ordained minister. I did not feel this way because I did not feel like God had called me. I felt this way because of an unmerited attack that I had received. But one Sunday at an afternoon service, this pastor that I know while she was preaching, she turned and looked at me and said, do not let anyone tell you that you are not supposed to be a preacher. That same day, I had a conversation with a man that I greatly admire, Mr. Chris Herbin, and he told me that God had me where God wanted me to be. When you are down, someone will encourage you. There are benefits to being a part of a church family. A third benefit of being a part of a church family is that when you need help, someone will have your back. When you need help, someone will have your back. One of the most phenomenal ministries that Christ Church has is the Carpenters Group. This ministry is in place so that members will not be taken advantage of. I do not want to sound repetitive, but because we live in a broken world, some people will try to take advantage of people, and some target our seniors, especially those that live alone. But there is good news. There is always good news. And the good news is that if you must replace your heating and air unit, the members that make up the carpenter's crew will gladly come and be in there with you so you will not be overpriced for something. There are more services that this ministry offers for free. All you must do is ask. When you need help, someone will have your back. Another important ministry that Christ Church has is the health and wellness closet. So if you are injured and do not have the funds or insurance to get a wheelchair, crutches, cane, or a high toilet seat, there is no need to stress because in the health and wellness closet, those items are in there and you can borrow them. Being a part of a church family has benefits. When you need help, someone will have your back. A fourth benefit of being a part of a church family is that you will be shaped. That's right. You will be shaped. If you worshiped with us last Sunday, then you heard how many of our youth that spoke mentioned how this church family has helped shape them into the people they are. In case you missed our testimonies, I will inform you all that we have some fantastic youth that are doing great things now and will do great things in the future. And part of the credit is because of the church being the church family, honoring his vows to nurture them in Christ's holy church. I felt the need to explore this text in Romans on this Pentecost Sunday. So what is Pentecost? Pentecost is 50 days after Resurrection Sunday. Holy Spirit was poured out on this church family of different nationalities on the first Pentecost. However, when Holy Ghost is at work, those that are different will come together and there will be unity and power. Even though they were 
different nationalities and spoke different languages because Holy Ghost was at work. Everyone understood what was being said whenever anyone spoke. So guess what? If we were fully Holy Ghost and not something else, we would be the world changers that God wants us to be. If we were full of Holy Ghost, there would not be a black, white, or Hispanic church. It would just be the church. If we were full of Holy Ghost, people struggling with sins or addiction could come into the house of God and get delivered. If we were full of Holy Ghost and not hate, then it would no be no need for denomination or that denomination. It would be God's house and all are welcome. If we were full of Holy Ghost, when people came into the house of God and were sick, they would walk out healed. Holy Ghost brings the anointing and the anointing destroys yokes and removes burdens. If we were full of Holy Ghost, the church would be diverse, but it would be no division. I saw a meme on Facebook where a person asked, do you need Holy Ghost to go to heaven? And the person responded that they need Holy Ghost to go to Walmart. I want to be filled with Holy Ghost so I do not do anything that God does not want me to do because I strive for Christian perfection. Holy Ghost gives us different gifts so none of us are letter, lesser or better than anyone else. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, says, For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So Christ, we, though many form one body, each member belongs to all the others. I like how Paul compares the church family to the human body. He is saying we are one with different roles to play. I remember one time when I fell and sprained my ankle badly, and I'm so glad that our middle daughter didn't see it because she would laugh. That's the kind of relationship we have. But, but that strained ankle affected other parts of my body. I could only walk on one leg. I could not put any pressure on that bad ankle. Therefore, I had to hop everywhere I went, which was no fun. It was hard for me to drive my car. The only thing that I wanted to do was lie down. Please hear the system, brothers. When the church body, also known as the church family, is hurt, we all are affected. When a person is not operating a gift that they are only called to do, the entire body is affected. The eyes can do what the ears cannot do. The ears can do what the eyes cannot do. Lose your sin and tell me how good your ears hear for you. Lose your hearing and tell me how good your eyes see for you. Excuse me, hear for you. But when each member is doing that part, there is harmony. The body cannot be full of eyes, ears, or legs. Every member is needed. I'm going to say that again. Every member is needed. So if you are here and doing what God has called you to do, from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you. When every member is present and effective, we will see the benefits of being a part of a church family. Before I close, I want to ask some questions that you all do not have to answer, but I want you all to do some self-reflection. The first question, are you doing your part to make this church family be the best family it can be? Once again, are you doing your part to make this church family be the best family it can be? Second question, are you making sure that someone who needs someone is not alone if that is your gift? Are you making sure that someone who needs someone is not alone if that is your gift? Third question, are you there to encourage someone down if that is your gift. Are you there to encourage someone down if that is your gift? And last question, if someone needs help, are you there to help them if you can? You know, it is like the lyrics of a Hezekiah Walker song that I will not sing because I cannot sing. I need you, you need me. We're all a part 
of God's body. Stand with me, agree with me, we're all a part of God's body. It is God's will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Christ Church family, did you hear that? You are important to me. I need you to survive. Would you all pray with me? God, we thank you for all the sacrifices that those that are in the armed forces risk and gave to keep us safe from dangers that we may have seen and may not have seen. God, help us be the people that will respect our veterans and be there for our veterans and show our appreciation for the sacrifices that they made. And we ask that you help them, God, because they only know and you only know what they've seen and experienced by losing parts of our bodies or friends or family. So just help us be the people that you will for us to be, God. And we pray that Christ Church will be a church that welcomes all people like we strive to do, God, and continue to welcome all people. But do not just bless this church, but bless every church, God, so that way it will be no division, God, and we will be the church that loves all people and transforms those into disciples. There are so many things that I could pray for, but I do not have the time. So I ask that your Holy Spirit will intercede on our behalf, and we pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen.